Hey guys, it's Raven from Breaking Glass Pictures, and today I'm here with Kayla Stanton. She is the lead actress who plays in the new movie, Amber's Descent. Uh, nice to meet you. Thank you for being here via Zoom. <laughs> Thank you. It's very nice to be here. <laughs> um, so a little bit about yourself. This is your first lead in a feature film, correct? It is, yeah. Okay. <laughs> very tell exciting. Us, tell us a little bit about the film for people watching who aren't familiar. Okay, so the film focuses on uh, my character, Amber. Basically, she is a renowned pianist and she lives in Seattle and she's all's going well, but then a traumatic event happens. I won't uh, uh, relay all the details of that. I don't want to give you any spoilers, but basically she goes through a traumatic event and so she decides to move to the country, start afresh and write her own symphony. So she goes to the country, buys this gorgeous big house, but then, of course, as time goes on, you're sort of left wondering, hang on a second, is Amber, is she perhaps losing her mind or is there something else going on? Is this house maybe haunted or is something else going on? So that's the basic premise of Amber's okay. Descent. Perfect. Um, so I watched, I watched the movie and I watched your behind the scenes DVD extras, which if you're watching this, you can buy the DVD. Um, you talked about how you haven't really met Michael Buffaro before this film. You, you had a run-in with him, but you never actually had a sit-down with him? Yeah, that's right. That's so right. It's, it was very, this is so rare, but he offered me the role and I hadn't read for him. We hadn't worked together before. I mean, we, we had uh, our agents sort of know each other and so we had connections in the industry, but we'd never met before. But basically, I think we lived in the same part of Vancouver, uh, the East Vancouver and he would see me walking up and down the street and honestly we would bump into each other for coffee and he like literally that's really how we knew each other my husband used to work at a pub that he would frequent so okay. I think they sort of knew each other you know a little bit more than we, <laughs> we did right. but um, but yeah no uh, it was a really really strange thing to happen but you know it's 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 Hollywood North, Vancouver, so I guess there's a lot of people in the industry. So you you can randomly get roles based on walking down the street. Right, there you go. <laughs> there's plotting actors out there. <laughs> so when he approached you to, you know, offer you this role, was it an easy yes or was it something that you were hesitant with, like, agreeing? Uh, not hesitant at all. I mean, what I did was I, I asked him to send me the script. So I read the script and I absolutely loved it. And then I spoke to my agent and I said, look, um, what do you think of these guys? Should I work with them? And she was really happy to, for me to do that. So yeah, good. I <laughs> right, yeah. Perfect. So now that you've done the whole leading role thing your first time, is there anything you wish you knew then that you know now? Oh, look, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things. I mean, it, it, it was a lot of hard work, Amber's Descent. It was a low budget film. So, you know, we shot it in about two weeks, which is really unheard of in film land, <laughs> even in the independent film scene. So it was so, so grueling. Um, I think what I need to tell myself is to give myself time after shoots, I guess, to, to sort of rest and recuperate and get back to normal life because it really does take a toll on you, especially if you're, you know, doing 15 hour days right. and you're doing like eight costume changes a day and it, it's super intense. It was heavy work. I'm very, very grateful for it. And I, I'm, you know, there's a lot of lessons that I learned as a result of doing this, but about my craft and technique and all of that. But I think the biggest thing is actually to know when to rest. And I think that allocating time after shoots to rest is something that I don't think a lot of actors have the luxury of doing. Right, right. It's project so, after project. Yeah, yeah. Um, so did you have to prepare for this role in some way? You know, you hear some actors and actresses getting in the role, like getting the character weeks before they even start filming just to get their head in the right space. Did you do any of that for Amber's Descent at all? I did actually. I took a month off before um, the shoot uh, off my day job so that I could just fully commit to this. So I was in Vancouver living there for two years away from my friends and family. I'm Australian, obviously. So I didn't really have a network of people there and I didn't have a lot of money. So I didn't actually have access to a piano that I could practice on. Oh. So what I did was I had a friend who was a musician that lived there who lent me his keyboard, which was so, oh. 
so great, but a piano is not the same as a keyboard for those that know this, these keys weren't even weighted. Um, but I, I put it on my dining table and I would literally practice for about four hours a day for about a month before to prepare for that. I watched a lot of documentaries on uh, famous pianists as well. Nina Simone was the one that had a bit of a, an influence on me just in terms of her physicality and how she really feels the music when she's playing it. So okay. yeah, I think that that was the sort of thing that I did. I, I had a friend as well in Vancouver that I spoke to about um, the headspace of people with trauma. So she works with women in particular uh, who've gone through trauma. So I, I discussed a lot of things with her uh yeah that was that was basically nice. my practice. all right so you did your research okay I did. <laughs> um is there one genre movie that you haven't been in yet or or tv show or anything that you like would love to just be part of you know some people think like comedies they're like gathering like what is yours look honestly i love period pieces so okay. anything where I get to dress up in costume that's not something I would wear every day anything that's sort of fantasy orientated where okay. it's not real life that's sort of my jam that's what I love um I would say I'm probably more of a dramatic actress than a comic actress but I don't know sometimes I get work in comedy so maybe I'm funny I don't know <laughs> <laughs> you must have something going for you so someone thinks I am yeah <laughs> Um, so you mentioned you do have a day job. So if, if acting and things like that, like weren't on the table for you, what would you want to do? Is it what you're doing now? Is that like, what would, yeah. what would be your other option? So I, at the moment I work a lot in voiceover. So okay. I'm a copywriter, uh, and I also work as a voiceover artist and do a few other things for, uh, OPA announcements and shopping centers. So okay. I'm actually really, really lucky. I work like a couple of hours a day and, and those hours are really flexible. So I'm able to go to auditions. I'm able to work as an actor okay. uh, whenever I want. So I'm actually in a really, really lucky position. It's taken me 10 years to get there. <laughs> but um, yeah, something in the communications field, I would think would be, because I have a degree in communications. So okay. Any, I've worked in advertising in the past as well at uh, one of our major commercial networks over here in Australia. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty lucky actually. My backup career is kind of going right. really well. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And it, it ties hand in hand. So that seems to, seems to work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so do you have any projects going on right now? Like future things in the works that we might be able to expect? <laughs> Anything you can reveal? Yeah, okay, so I can't reveal too much, but I did shoot two short films last year here in Sydney, which okay. I don't know if anyone making film in 2020, I think is pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was a few months there when nothing was getting made. And then towards the latter half of the year, we got really lucky here in Sydney. Um, uh, uh, COVID-19 hadn't really spread through, so we were able to go back right. to work. So we're pretty lucky here. Um, so yeah, at the end of last year, I shot two short films. Uh, so one of them's horror. Okay, okay. <laughs> horror, horror thriller again. <laughs> I do love the genre. Um, so yeah, that'll be really fun. I can't say too much about it because they're still in post production and and yeah, they don't want me to release any spoilers. So but that will hopefully be coming out at some point this year. And uh, the other film I uh, co-produced with my husband. Uh, it's called Femme. It's a, a short film about a feminist vigilante. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seems to be quite thematic at the moment. We're finding that there's a lot of content uh, right. that's sort of focused similarly at the moment, which is great. I think it's really great for women and feminism. And yeah, <laughs> very on board with that. So yeah, that Fem's also in post-production. So I'll keep everyone posted with news on that one. <laughs> Absolutely. And we'll make sure we have all of Kayla's socials posted at the bottom of this video. Um, <laughs> so two more questions before I let you go. Who is your dream co-star, dead or alive? Who would you love to be Ooh. featured in a movie with? That's a really good question. I think I'm going to go with the generic generic it sounds generic but every actor says i would love to work with meryl streep one day she's just okay. queen <laughs> okay i i completely understand like <laughs> yeah aim high right aim high I, yeah. <laughs> um and then fun a fun fact about yourself could be literally anything you can lick your elbow whatever just tell us something that we don't know about you all right 
Um, just because you said the elbow thing, I feel like I have a weird double jointed thumb. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know okay. if that's in focus, but yeah, yeah oh. that's a fun fact. Um, I'm also a ginger that lives in the sun in Australia, which is a, an interesting mix. <laughs> I pretty much have to hibernate most of my life. <laughs> and to use your the best friend. <laughs> that's true. Sunscreen is my best friend. <laughs> Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, this is Kayla Stanton with Amber's Descent. I will have all of the links to the movie where you can stream it online, buy the DVD. There are some um, extra bonuses in it. Um, thank you so much for sitting down and talking with me. And good luck with everything. And I can't wait to see your next project when it comes out. Thank you so much. It's been great chatting. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>